I'm Mike Vardy. Meal planning is important because it prevents us from being a disappointed wreck when dinner time comes around and we have no clue what to make or even if we have the ingredients to make the meal. It's a time and a money saver, but most importantly, it frees up valuable brain space. Creating a meal plan prepares us for the week to come and gives us peace of mind that we're organized and can feed ourselves and our family. That's why I do it, and that's why Plan to Eat helps me do it. Your subscription includes access to the Plan to Eat website and fully featured mobile apps on iOS and Android. And Plan to Eat gives you the tools to clip and organize recipes from any website, the ones your family loves and that fit your dietary preferences and needs. And you can create a meal plan around your schedule. Then what happens is the Plan to Eat software automatically creates an organized shopping list based on your plan. So sign up for your free trial at plantoeat.com slash timecrafting. That's plantoeat.com forward slash timecrafting. The coupon will be automatically applied to your account and can be used when you're ready to subscribe. It's valid for new customers only. Give Plan to Eat a try today. And this is the Productivityist Podcast. This week on the show, I talk with James Eater of Causer and many other things that he's developed over the years. We talk about the idea of cause and connection, and he's built this 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 app, this platform that helps people connect better. And I'm I'm really big on that in person, face to face connection. In fact, as I'm recording this intro later today, I'm doing this on a Wednesday, which is my you know my daily theme at this point in time on Wednesdays do audio and video work. But later today, I'm having an in person meeting with someone who I met in person at an event and he lives right here in my city we've had plenty of uh, opportunities to do that and uh, there's just something about that that connection and uh, what james has built has as uh, you know it's it's interesting because uh, there are lots of social networking apps out there and i think causers uh, filling it filling a need i hope it does well and uh, i hope that you enjoy this episode well and well let's just get started here's my conversation with james eater on the productivity podcast enjoy I'd like to welcome James Eater to the Productivityist Podcast. Thanks for joining me, James. No, too. Thanks for having me. All right. So I'm going to start off with a quote from you. And you're like, what? I didn't expect this. But this is something (laughs) I found on the place where all good quotes are found, Facebook. Hi, everyone. I've launched Causal to help people connect with each other around the world based on location. Imagine if you travel through a city and you're able to see which other ambassadors are around you and connect with them easily. Now you can. So first off, why why is this kind of um, connection important to you? And then I want to talk a little bit about what Causer is. Absolutely. Look, I think connection, deep down, we're all looking for, for connection. And I think it's like our social, just the DNA that we've been, been born with. And we're, we're social beings. But I think one of the challenges around kind of current social media is perhaps not as social as it could be because it puts a a barrier or a wall up actually, instead of breaking it down and enabling more people to connect face to face. So there's a real essence around if we can give people context and help people understand who's nearby, that's that's kind of the essence of why community like this is really, really important and connection. So what does, I don't want to spend a lot of time on Causer, but people will be able to download it and check it out. But what does Causer do that helps, um, you know, impact that and allows people to 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 leverage these kind of connections or at least leverage the internet and leverage the technology to connect better and maybe maybe uh, even more in a in a more impactful way. Yeah, definitely. I think the key thing is that I can share just a brief story that gives it a bit of context. Was sure. sitting uh, on London Underground and uh, I ended up sitting. A guy came to sit next to me with a CV in his hand, his resume, and I just turned to him and said, "Are you looking for a job?" Um, he said yes. And a short version of a longer story is ended up coming to work for my first startup. And the question I ask kind of in listeners listening is kind of what stops often a lot of those conversations happening? And I guess kind of three core pillars, really. The first one is permission. Often we don't feel like we have kind of got permission to just randomly start talking. The second one is confidence. And the third one, which I think is the most powerful, is context. So if I knew that he was looking for a job without seeing the CV, what other things could be unlocked and what other opportunities surround us every day. And so by providing the context, which is really key. So that was kind of one of the first stories that really started the impetus behind Causa. And so what the app does, you can download it. I'm currently on iOS only, but we're getting on Android soon. You download the app, you can log in, and then you can see who's nearby. 
and they're based on context. So you can join different groups. So that could be everything from marathon running to your company to alumni networks. And so the idea is if you know someone else is Dubai from one of those networks, then that gives you the context to start a conversation. And it's very much a platform to enable more face-to-face -face connection versus being just a digital, another digital platform that I don't really think we need today. Excellent, excellent. So let's talk a little bit about kind of, you know, I mean, we talked, we touched a little bit on how, why, why connection matters to you and the importance of it. Um, when, when it comes to how technology can, should enable face-to-face -face connection, why do you think, like, I'll give you an example. Um, yeah. uh, I just, uh, earlier this year, I went to my 25th year high school reunion. So there, I've just dated myself. But uh, <laughs> with Facebook now in play, uh, you know, there were, uh, you know, there were a good number of people there, but there were probably some people that could have gone, but just decided, you know, what? well, I'm already keeping up with what Mike or, or Barb or, you know, Brian or whoever yeah. is doing because I see them on Facebook all the time. Um, so I think that there's that value of getting face to face. That would be an example of how technology allowed us to all come together because before you'd have to mail a letter and all that stuff. And, and you know, so, oh. so how, how technology can is one thing, but how, sh how technology should enable face-to-face -face connection. That's something I'd like you to unpack a little bit. Sure. I think, you know, like years ago, I, I, I think when, whether it be the lights of Skype or voice, um, you know, um, technology and video conferencing, people thought like people weren't going to travel anymore. You know, there was mm. the, you're never going to get on a plane and go and see, but there's, there's the face-to-face -face connection that really you can sense and you can get a feeling and response of how, you know, people interact. And there's, again, a lot being said for remote working, but it actually it's when you get people in the room together, you know, there's an energy and, you know, why do people still attend conferences? You know, you could probably access all the information online about, you know, for, from a lot of the content that are delivered at conferences, even exclusive content. There's, there's variations that I'm sure from a learning perspective, but it's actually that smart of experience by being there, by sharing with other people, that that turns it then into a much more powerful experience. And the still seems you know, holds true, um, which is why, as you said, your reunion can be then so impactful, despite some people feeling like, oh, they, they can get what they want, or they could, they're updated with everyone. But it's the nuances and it's the, um, you know, the, the context, really, that kind of unlocks and takes relationships to a deeper level that I think that's also so challenging today is people feel like they are experiencing, you know, connection and they're living, they, they get a context for people's lives. But it's also a filter which, you know, we often hear about, and this is one of the challenges, I think, with social media today, is is kind of the the depth of actually what you're getting. And you're getting this filter of how great everyone's lives are, which actually, like beneath it, that's also kind of a, ch a challenge that needs to be unpacked. And, you know, instead of updating on Facebook going, oh, I'm having a great time traveling, and then eating a meal by yourself, actually how you can unlock that to then have a real connection with someone, a more meaningful connection. I think that's really key at the heart of it. I'm going to I'm going to ask something that might seem a bit off off kilter but I'm going to ask it anyways. Do you say happy birthday to all the people on Facebook when their birthdays show up? And if so, how do you do it? And if not, what do you do instead? That's really interesting. You know what? I've heard an interesting uh, view actually of birthdays on on Facebook. One is them actually to use it as a really useful filter to remove people who if you don't really care about their birthday, then should they really be a friend? Um, of yours. Um, so an interesting kind of, I'm maybe say answering the question, I do selectively, absolutely, and I've done it in the last two days, send somebody a birthday message. Um, but at the same time, I do use it as a, as a filter to remove people that I think, well, do I, does this really matter to me? And is this an important friendship to continue if I don't even care that it's their birthday? So that's how you use it. All right. Well, that's, that's it. I, I want to I talk a little bit more about setting aside time to make these connections because, I mean, obviously we're on the Productivity is Podcast. We want to talk about like the time component. So how do you craft time to to not just establish new new connections, but foster existing ones? Yeah, I think that's, that's a really great question. And I think in terms of fostering new connections, it was one of the reasons that kind of Causa came about because I ended up traveling a huge amount for work. Um, and to Madrid and Athens, the U.S. a number of times and often finding myself, I guess, in that downtime. I think there's a statistic like from your traveling time, it's somewhere between 30 to 60 percent 
of your time traveling is actually used for work and the rest of it is defunct and kind of almost a waste of time. Um, and so it's actually turning, I guess, that downtime, including if you're online somewhere waiting, instead of perhaps going and seeing your general social media, to unlock if there are people nearby that would be useful to connect with, especially in airports is a great example. Mm. Let's say your flight's delayed and being able to unlock you know, that that time um, is, is really, really key. So using technology to, to help in those situations. Um, and then in terms of maintaining, um, I actually kind of, I do a, a monthly newsletter that I send to all my contacts that always creates, as amazing, these conversations that come back as a result, you know, of, of that message, um, just providing people an update. And I, I didn't send it. I had a bit of a gap between my first business and then launching Causa, and I stopped sending that. And I had emails from people saying, you know, are you still sending the email? Because I've not received it in a while. And if not, please let make sure I'm on the list. And that was a bit of a prompt to then say, oh, look, I should I should start doing it again. Um, but also being out um, and continue, I guess, that the kind of, yeah, be, being on the scene and, and meeting people and just open, I think, um, is is really key. You, you, you mentioned to, uh, to me when we were, preparing for this, the idea of the, of net giving versus networking. I, I love it. I mean, I love the, the concept. Can you kind of dive into that a little bit more so that my audience has a sense of, okay, what, what do you mean by that? Definitely. Look, I think a lot of people kind of word networking also kind of makes people, I guess, afraid or a bit abrasive or, you know, thinking, okay, what, what can I do to get something from this event? Or if I, you know, attend, oh, I don't want it to be a waste of time if I don't get something. And actually by framing it, thinking, how can you help other people? You're probably doing kind of far more above and beyond what most other people are doing the event. And whether that be, you know, if you're an event and you meet two different people that actually would make that really useful connection with each other, that's again, like extremely powerful and playing almost a role as well as kind of a host of the event or kind of adding value. So the idea behind net giving, instead of like thinking, okay, what can I get? It's, it's again, it, as it says, what can I give? How can I help? And whether that be connect them with someone else in your network or someone else in the room or recommend a book or the podcast that you're listening to or whatever it is that kind of adds just a bit of value. Again, chances are then they'll remember you um, far more than someone else in the room that's, you know, if someone's trying to sell you something or position themselves in a certain way or trying to get something back. And it's amazing how that kind of, I guess, pay it forward attitude then can result, you know, in a whole host of things. And um, I've just actually um, come back from a lean startup event and um, I was speaking at one of the events on Friday and the organizers then just, just this evening introduced me already to somebody else that it's amazing when you look back, I guess, you, I think it's Steve Jobs quotes, you don't realize how the dots join. But it's only when you look back, you can see there's a perfect, I guess, line of how they all connect. And I think that's the same way by by putting yourself out and by helping and adding value and making a difference for people. Um, it does come back. But in the moment when you're doing it, you might not know exactly how. Social mores when it comes to connection is something I'd like to be uh, dive into a little bit, too, because I was thinking about this as we were preparing for this. And I recorded I'm, I'm doing more Facebook lives. I'm doing more <laughs> webinars. There's this video component. We actually, when we started, um, you had your video on and I did too, just so we, I could say, hey, you know, we've been chatting back and forth via email. It'd be good to see our faces, you know, like actually sure. chatting as opposed to just images of ourselves that we've seen each other in social profiles. So yeah. I actually recorded. So I, I'm very, um, when it comes to the, the Facebook Lives, I do I have a specific one that I do, but I also have impromptu ones. And I'm finding that it took me a while to be okay with me walking like or being outside with my phone elevated. I will not use a selfie stick uh, elevated <laughs> so that you could get a good shot of me while I do a quick Facebook live for however long or and I've seen yep. that happen in airports too. And the reason this jogged my memory is that guys like Dave Asprey and and and, uh, and I think uh, there's a few others that have done them in airports before with like the flights delayed or they've got nothing else yeah. to do. They're connecting where, you know, where do you kind of draw the line between spending that time connecting with say your thousand true fans or those people that are paying attention to your stuff versus being in a public place where maybe that technology can be disruptive to others that might be in the air. Cause you've, you and I've probably been in places too, where, and I, and I this happened to me not too long ago where I was uh, sitting, waiting for a flight home. And these guys started to play this video of a UFC fight. And I love UFC, but 
louder than sin. Like you could, and I'm like, okay, guys, come on. It's like 11 at night. Like, can we, <laughs> you know, where, where's that line? And, and, and should you be willing to enforce it on yourself? Like put those boundaries up yourself as well as ask others to kind of like respect those as well. Like, I'd love to hear some thoughts on that. Yeah, definitely. Look, I think there's, you know, the, um, the notion of like digital Sabbath as well and the importance of like disconnecting and turning off and being respectful. Um, you know, you've got, uh, I know the quiet, um, zone, like on trains, you've got the quiet carriage. Mm -hmm. Um, what's very interesting as well. There's kind of talk online a lot about, um, people kind of referencing, well, if you've got a quiet carriage, why don't you have like a networking carriage where people can go on a specific carriage and just be open to, to connecting and saying hello and, and, and those opportunities. And, um, you know, I, I think it's, it is about balance and it's the right time and respecting that. Um, and I think as well in, in the same way, like one of the things kind of behind goals was around this enable using technology, which I mentioned enabling connection, but by being on the platform, you're saying you're open to that connection. Whereas opposed to if you were in the departure lounge and you went up to everyone and you started talking, Again, some people would be open to that and other people wouldn't, but you just right. don't know who. Right. So it's it's all around, I guess, that framing and that construct of actually how can you use it in a sensitive way. Um, and that's, I guess, the baseline, which I mentioned earlier, the permission, confidence and context. Mm -hmm. It's actually by giving people, by being on the platform, you're giving people permission. And, and that's in the same and, way. Yeah. And, and to be fair, we live in a society that's a lot more tolerant of this too. Yeah, definitely. But it, you know, I mentioned the digital Sabbath earlier, which have you heard of that theme before? Yeah, oh yeah, like, definitely. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, you know, and I think there's um, a coffee shop in New York and I'm sure in other places now as well, where you can go in and then they lock your phone away mm -hmm. in like a, in a fake book or whatever it is on your table. So you can't touch it, um, you know, while, while you're in and people are like proactively seeking out these places, um, which is like really, really key. And I think it's important to, to be able to yeah, turn off. Um, uh, yeah. So as we wrap up, I want to talk a little bit about Causer. And I mean, you've, you've told me why you put it together. What, what is the goal? What is the, like, not just the short term, but what, it, what is your, what are your plans for, for this platform? Because um, I think that there's, there's a lot there that can be, uh, yeah, there's a lot you can do with it. Sure, definitely. So look, I think in terms of our vision, the aim is to create like millions of meaningful connections for people nearby all around the world every day. And you think about, I guess, LinkedIn is around connecting your professional network and Facebook's connecting your friends. And I guess it's that kind of frame in between those two things that, you know, people, um, there are more people within the square mile that you're sitting right now that you don't know than you know, that you could potentially unlock and help. And I think, you know, there's a huge amount of like, I guess, fear and uncertainty in the world today. And I guess these barriers that people put up, and I think historically, it was much clearer for people which tribes people were in. And so, you know, almost, you know, you've got all the sports teams, right? And you'll notice this when you're leaving a match or a game or baseball, whatever it is, you've got the, the, the I guess, the uniforms that people identify with. Um, and that's, I guess, a, a great example. Someone said they were given a friend, Chelsea, a football shirt, uh, but they ended up with a jacket that they were wearing for the best part of a year. And it unlocked so many conversations. But that's not the norm. And I guess now that's kind of a big challenge. And so it's actually about helping create connections between like-minded people that can really, really make a difference. And I love the films like The Butterfly Effect mm. and various things that like, if you think about just a small way, if we can help make those connections that makes, and again, the emphasis is that meaningful connection that can make a difference. But I look at meaningful, it could be someone recommending a restaurant. Yeah, that so it's subjective. They would never yeah. want to. Something it's subjective. Yeah, it's completely, yeah. I mean, meaning, and, and it also, I think meaningful, it also is relative to, well, I mean, and actually let's, let's discuss this. Is it relative to the relationship or is it relative to the person behind the relationship? So for example, um, you know, there's certain things that I would be willing to connect with someone about based on our current relationship, but they might not, you know what I mean? Like, I think there's some, I'm not saying there's rules, but there's certain things you'd be willing to share with one person they wouldn't be willing to share with another. And I think that that, that, that facilitation is important as well. Definitely. And I think, you know, that there, I guess there are different levels to it. And what's interesting though, I think, and this comes up in the, the world, I guess, of work-life balance and in terms of how people structure themselves. And I think historically those lines were much, much clearer. But today, as a person, I guess I went to the University of Birmingham. I'm an entrepreneur in the startup space. 
you know, I um, also went, I got a school that I went to, various different parts of me that that makes me who I am. And at different times, I want to connect with different types of people. And that will, again, depending on that environment, like enable and want me to to share um, in, in different contexts. But I think the line's very much blurring between, like, I guess, that hard line. And, you know, I love the question when um, if I'm speaking at events and unlocking the question, like, what are people, what are you passionate about? What do you really care about? And when you get to the heart of that, like very quickly, you unlock something and excitement and energy that's very different to going, um, for some people, these align, but where do you work or what do you do, et cetera. And I think it's, uh, yeah, it's, it's really, really important like to, to be aware of that, but also actually to challenge yourself to go a bit deeper in that. And in terms of meaningful, I think it really does depend on, on those two people. And, you know, also those, those things are so fluid. So I think one of the feedback people said is like, well, are you a recruitment platform? Well, I'm like, no, but some people, you know, just up until recently, I was looking for a technical co-founder. You know, that was like my number one thing. But between here and every day that I was traveling, I could have sat next to the dream person that I could have, you know, met that could have added value that I could have made a great difference with by them coming to work with us and vice versa. But I just didn't know that. And so that was for me a pressing thing for a few months. But now I found that person that's no longer, I guess, the top priority. So, you know, I think meaningful, it does, it changes depending again, obviously what, what you're looking for and how you can unlock that. Um, and, and ultimately it's about really making a difference. Um, and that means different things for different people at different times. All right. So as we, as we wrap up, I want to ask you one final question. That's going to give somebody an action item as they leave here. So anyone listening, like if what's the, what's one thing Somebody to see that it could be simple. It could be complex, it could be whatever that someone can do today to create a, create a meaningful connection or begin the, the, the process of creating a meaningful connection with, with someone or, 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 or maybe a group of people. Yeah, definitely. So of course, aside from downloading the app, but the, the context without it, and I've had so many people say this to me is after I've spoken to you, I've then gone on and I have just said hello. And whether that be while I'm waiting in line for my, with my train ticket or I'm, I'm in the coffee shop waiting to buy something, just just open with it, hello, and how's your day going? Or just something to, to break the ice or ask them if they have had this cake before or make it something, you know, very open question, very, very simple, um, non-personal, but just relevant to the context that you're in and where you are um, and just breaking the ice. And you'll be amazed how many people will just respond and just, um, and even if you're still unsure to say that, just say, Hey, I was listening to a podcast. And one of the challenges was the, um, James suggested, this guy suggested English crazy guy said, I should just say hello to you. Do you mind if I just say hi and see what they say? And I promise it will result in, in stories, conversations, and opportunities that you just don't even know existed. Well, James, we, we've had a few stories today. We've created a connection, and I hope that you you will be able to continue that connection with my audience and with me. So share with us now where people can go to learn more about you and, of course, get the app. So for sure. So you can go to causa.co, which is C-A-U-S-R dot C-O, um, and you can find me on Twitter. So James Eder, J-A-M-E-S-E-D-E-R. And also feel free to find me on LinkedIn and reach out and just reference uh, the podcast. And I look forward to connecting with you. James, thanks again for joining me today. Thanks so much. And that does it for this week's episode. Thanks to James for joining me. You can learn more about all of his stuff in the show notes. And uh, again, uh, I will, I'm going to put Causer through the paces. So you'll hear me talk about that on an upcoming bonus episode of the show to give you my thoughts on it. Uh, and it'll be completely unfiltered, unfettered. Uh, and if you're, wait, wait a minute, how do I get a bonus episode? Well, you become a patron of the Productivityist podcast. Head over to patreon.com slash productivityist to make that happen. And of course, there's lots of other cool things you get as a patron, including being part of an exclusive Slack community where conversations happen all the time. Uh, thanks to John Polster for producing this week's episode of the show. We are coming up. As of next week, if you take there are 52 weeks in a year, we will be episode 156 marks the three year anniversary of the Productivity is podcast. Uh, and I'm pretty sure that makes it my longest running podcast to date. I have to do some some data data checking on that, but it's right up there. And I want to thank all of you who have been listening over the long term, as well as you who are just joining joining us today. Um, it's been a, a great ride and uh, it's not done yet. <laughs>
I aim to make the show bigger and better as we go on. And if you have some thoughts as to how I can do that, uh, the best way to help me out is to either email me and you can email me at askmike at productivityist.com and let me know what you think. Or if you want to be more public with your rating or review, you can do so in iTunes or wherever you're listening to the podcast. It's going to help me make the show better. We're three years in and we want to make it better. This is a, this is, this is a marathon, not a sprint. And I intend to treat it as such. Thanks to all of you for listening. Thanks to James for joining me. Thanks to all of the guests I've had on the show. And thanks to all of the people who've supported the podcast, either as Patreon supporters or people who are just uh, listening to the show and enjoying it during their commute to work or washing the dishes or wherever, wherever that's happening for you. That's it for this week. I'll see you next time. Until then, I'm Mike Vardy of Productivityist, reminding you to stop guessing and start going. 